Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. This narrated, this hadith narrated by Sina Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. He said, there were four or five of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who would not leave his uh, door. And uh, so when one time he went out at night and I followed him and he entered a yard a, that's like a surround, that's fenced in and from the uh, from a yard of the uh, marketplace and he prayed and he elongated as such that and so I said to myself Allah has clenched the spirit of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i.e. he has caused him to die and he said I, I said to myself Allah is taking the ruh of the spirit of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I will never see him and he said so I was saddened and I cried and then he raised his head and he called me and he said, what happened to you? Or he said, what, what is this I see with you? And he, so I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you made your sajda so long that I said, uh, Allah has uh, caused the messenger to, his messenger to die and I will never see him. So I was sad and I cried. He said, I did this sajda as a shukr out of gratitude to my Lord for what he gave to my ummah for indeed he said whoever prays upon you from him from them from your ummah uh, a prayer I have written for him ten good uh, deeds so he made the sajda here I love this hadith because of everything in it you know um, you know that caring and the caring of Sina Abdurrahman ibn Auf. Really this the care that they had for the Prophet وسلم, was more than the love that they would have for their children. It was so much more and it was so much care and uh, you know, just hirs. You know, they're so avid over him. And what's what's more beautiful though is that he was even more so over them. He was more than that to them than they were to him and because all good he started it you know he is the one who starts the good he begins you with good and you know uh, and then we reciprocate it but we never we never loved him first we never cared about him first he loved us first he cared about us first and then we, you know, of course we can't help loving him back but here um I want to say that here how he sallallahu alaihi wasallam did the sajda as to a, as a shukr and gratitude to tell us panatara why not just because um that this salawat is so great but he was grateful that we would get so many blessings from it that we would get so many hasanat so many good deeds out of it not just because you know his name and his rank is already great, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But this, he was showing gratitude for our, our sake, right? For our sake, that you know how much benefit we get from doing something small, you know, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Outwardly, it's small, but to Allah subhanahu wa taala, it's it's great that He gives us ten times the reward, right? And so he was showing gratitude for our sake. And this is what um, uh, we have to look at the hadith and the seerah with this rule that Sina Ali and Sina Abdullah bin Mas'ud gave us. And remember, you know, for, for everything, really, and that's uh, when we study the seerah, to study in a way that, and to, of course, I always recommend to study it with people who have heart and um, really this burning love for the Prophet ﷺ, that they, they can really apply this hadith, you know, um, that, for example, you know, uh, people talk about the hijrah. The hijrah happened actually in Rabi'l Awal, but, you know, the beginning of the Islamic New Year, uh, you know, inshallah, kul amun to khayr, everybody, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this New Year a blessed year for the Muslims and uh, a year of opening and a year of rahmah and lutf um, and mercy. 
but you know everybody talks about hijra at this time but really it happened in Rabi'ul Awwal but um just to mention something for example about the hijra when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did the hijra it's important to have adab when we speak about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not say you know he was um fleeing or he feared for his life or his deen sallallahu alaihi wasallam he knew that this matter would be completed that his matter would be completed he knew that sallallahu alaihi wasallam and um that's why when badr came and the duas he made for badr you know if you destroy this group you know you will never be worshiped after today you know it was to say he he knew that that wouldn't happen but he was using that and one of the my teachers he says um and which i love that he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew how to go through the front door and the back door and inshallah i'll expound on that another recording because this recording will be get too long uh but the point is is that he um showed his uh neediness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way to uh get that what he was asking for and so here when he's going to the hijra he was ordered he was he's given permission and given the order to go from mecca to medina but to say that he feared for his life we know that during the hijra he was so calm he was so calm and collected and you as the you know Sina Abu Bakr it's described the way it's described that the prophet sallallahu was walking steadily looking forward you know determined and Sina Abu Bakr would be walking in front of him behind him to his right like you know always turning around looking around and you know protecting the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing what he was supposed to do right so radiyallahu anhu you know we owe him our lives seen Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu subhanallah um but and also we know a, he, that he consoled seen Abu Bakr la tahzan in Allah ma'ana and we know that the only reason he was hazin is for the sake of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right he was only you know that care that he was so concerned that something uh, bad would come to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam assured him no don't worry about it you know So the point here is to always see everything in the most the best light. You know, as much praise as you can give him for it. You know, that's basically we're following the rule of uh, Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud. You know, as much as we can do, we're going to do it inshallah. And that is our uh millah, that is our way, the way of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and the way of the Sahaba inshallah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.